On the Tractis, a dialogue. Formal. Master Peripsol, touching upon the subject of Platonizing Pythagoras, could you please expose how Master Iamblichus or some other Neoplatonists viewed the generation of the world, or how the theology of the progression was understood by the means of philosophy? I shall understand simplicity of elucidation as an approximation of perfect wisdom and take descriptions that others may find a trifle spectacle of naivety into the depths of knowing. For what one knows well, one may explain simply. What one knows simply, one may elucidate upon in complex details upon inquiry. Why thus be superficial when monolithic, verily, wisdom is found in simple statements that are tokens of great, complex, motions of ideas to be seen and admired by philosophers that penetrate their profundity. Master Peripsol Now, now, the monad produces itself out of itself. Containing different monads and producing them, it may be characterized by creativity and intelligence, its self-support, as it is self-derived. The divine coincides with the monad, it is the beginning and end of quantity, it makes things cohere and combine. It does not alter from its own principle. It is sometimes called chaos as the generator. It is called light, mixture, blending, obscurity, the cause of truth, a paradigm, also simple, being, order and concord. It is called after Proteus in Egypt as an assuming any form. The monad opens the diet, which is courage, daring, impulse, movement, energy, generation and kinship between all and all. It is called infinitely divisible and erato, attraction and anguish of separation, combining and drawing monad into substance. It is the endurance and strength, hardship of duality. It may be called longing to the oneness of the monad. It is called justice, as it has perfect scales, diometer, and is the base of the triad. Now, another bridge is built, a triad emerges from the monad and diad, and it is the first oddness, perfection, proportionality, limit and unification. It is prudence and wisdom, looking into the future. It is also called piety and terror, that it induces by its holiness, thrice blessed, thrice fortunate, the three transcendent worlds above the stars of Chaldeans, Babylonians, it is the completion of all things, friendship, harmony, unanimity. The thread is running through three loops now, and it opens the gates of Tetrad. It is the plurality conceived in the triad and projected forth. It is stability, and is called the custodian of nature, the enduring one, for it lasts. Now, now, we have four monads contained in the first, and all the monads weighted in each other and contrasted with each as we progress to the pentad, whereas the universe is manifestly completed and enclosed by the decad, seeded by monad, moved by the impulse of the diad, in which everything is characterized by lack of strife, alteration, comprehensive of justice that penetrated all, that is the harmony and composition of all elements in proper relation. It is called nemesis as justice, and providence as leveling out inequality and superficiality. It is called nuptial, it is characterized by androgyny, it is called a demigod, twin, immortal, pallas, for it reveals the fifth essence, it is heart-like when compared to the living creatures of earth. Then then, hexat, the further mutation in this procession is androgynous and represents marriage, it is the cause and condition of life. Pythagoreans, following Orpheus, Master Orpheus, call it wholeness of limbs, peace and reconciliation. It is also called the hell of missiles, presider over crossroads, and thus called Hecate, dwelled by justice, Thalia, the Panaceum, as in harmonizing different things. It is the wisdom that presides over all other virtues. Now Eptat, the Septagram, the virgin, not born of any mother, it is the forager because its structure has been collected and gathered together in a manner resembling unity. 
The epithet is indissoluble except that which has the same denominator as itself. It represents the guardian keeping eternal stability in the many cosmic bodies. It is called a strong fortification, a fortress within the decad as, the, as it is the abdomad between the monad and the decad. It is Athena, the justice, Isis as critical time. It denotes change, intelligence, health and light. We proceed to the octad. It is an embracing, embracer of all harmonies and it is Ogdoatic. It is Rhea, the mother of gods. It signifies love, friendship, wisdom, creative thought, safety and foundation. Now we move to the Enad, as affinity and equivalence is the Okeanus, horizon, encompasses all locations. It is Prometheus, it is Concord, limitation that brings all things together. It is lack of strife and assimilation. As Hephaestus, it denotes the way up to it by smelting and evaporation. As in alchemy, or yoga, yoga, tie and release, solve et coagula. It is called era, because air element falls under it. It is called Hyperion, because it goes beyond all number and magnitude. Creating yet another loop, we arrive at the Decad. It is neither contracting in an inferior fashion, nor expanding in a discordant fashion among its multitudes. It is a symbol of all phenomena, as to not multiply beings without necessity, and perfect and round the universe in the Decad. There is natural wholeness and equilibration in the Decad. It runs and circles back to itself. It is all fate, eternity, necessity, power, trust, atlas, unwearing, tireless like heaven, urania. It is eternity because it brings everything to fulfillment. Fuomo. Now, how should I view it as a progressing generation of interweaved forces reified to human understanding that are somehow interpreted by human heart and intellect to the notions and archetypes of platonic ideas, a priori and preconceived as forces, yet left as tokens in the Socratic irony that it must be written down, for it is understood only by the few who share in an experiential, not speculative knowledge, namely Gnosis. Peripsol. You did look at the painting, for sure. Formal. Well, yes. Master Peripsol. There are merely highly organized techniques of arriving at the whole. If you are of keen intelligence, perceive the whole and reveal at it. If you are caught at one detail of the painting and exclude everything else, it loses the harmonies and balance and you flatten everything down into this proportion. For more, is there a way to understand it better? I mean, some kind of a technique? Master Peripsol, if you wish, you may attempt to proceed in the following fashion. Take some pebbles and draw the figures from the monad to the decad on the stones. Afterwards, having in mind the structure, knowing now that each means try what each means, try to arrange them into a tetractus, then you may find it easier to see the whole and all the harmonies and proportions in between them. Fuomo. Thank you, great Heliodrom. It is of great benefit, as I may better understand my own starry longings now, that I came to Erotomus, Demeter, and strive find strife and dualities and dream of joining the idea of my love and the stars after we withdraw into all, through all, the final point of departure. Is that not a worthy goal? Master Peripsol, some depart to Avalon, some stay behind, other less fortunate, some oversee as watchers the toil of others, like great Bodhisattvas, calling them back, as if a great blindness overtook the human race and their starships, namely spirits, are clothed in garments of lesser sword, due to scheming of lesser religions, of ignorance and darkness. May gods listen to your appeal, Fuomo.